Hello, this is Dr. Chad Lavender from Marshall University presenting outcomes following augmentation of a quad tendon all inside ACL reconstruction with bone marrow concentrate mixed with allosync pure and autograph bone. Here you can see an MRI showing the ACL rupture. So some challenges that face us with ACL ruptures. Graft re-rupture is a common complication after ACL reconstruction. 6 to 11 percent for primary ACL reconstructions. Newer techniques have failed to improve re-rupture rate and return to play after ACL. Less than 25 years old, up to a 23% risk of secondary ACL injury to the, either the ipsilateral or the contralateral extremity. The estimated return to self-reported pre-injury knee function, 35 to 60%. So we present to you the biologic augmentation of the ACL. We use Allosync Pure and combine that with bone marrow concentrate, and now we add in autograft bone to our mixture, harvested using the Arthrex graft net. Here you can see the autograft bone, which has been removed from the Arthrex graft net, and that'll be used in our biologic composite mixture later in the case to augment our tunnels in the ACL reconstruction. Here you can see an image of the histology of the autograft bone, which is harvested using the Arthrex graft net. Some technique pearls. We use the shaver with the graft net attached through the lateral portal. Fraser tip suctions can be placed through the flip cutter guides to obtain more graft. It may be helpful to empty the graft net after obtaining the femoral bone, and the BMC to composite ratio is three to five. An accessory medial portal may be needed to deliver the composite graft into the femur. You can see on the left hand of the screen, six weeks status post fertilized ACL with composite grafting of the tibia and the femur and nearly complete incorporation of the bone compared to this patient who was also one year status post BTB ACL and you can see those x-rays on the right hand of your screen. Here you can see two MRIs status post biologic ACL reconstruction with composite grafting. Notice on the seven week MRI you can still see lysis in the tibial tunnel, which is completely resolved at the nine-week MRI. Also, pay close attention to the signal intensity of the graft. Here we see 14-week post-operative x-rays showing no tibial tunnel widening and what appears to be complete consolidation of the bone. Here you can see 14 weeks post-op. Patient has great control of her knee and is ready to progress in her therapy protocol. Here's our retrospective series for biologic ACL reconstructions. We have 43 patients, average age of 20, 27 of those were quad tendon autographs, 10 bone patellar tendon bone, and six allograft cases. 29 of the 43 are past the six month mark, back into sporting activities and at their regular activity level. We've had zero early failures, one culture negative knee effusion, and at the two week mark, the VAS score is 1.7 out of 10. So here's a second look at a biologic ACL reconstruction at the six week time mark and you can see a vessel fully identified from the femur to the tibia on the ACL graft. Here you can see we tested a patient at 10 weeks out from surgery and used functional testing we would normally use at the six month mark. The patient passed with flying collars. Here you can see his single leg hop and then here you can see we did a timed single leg squat. Overall, his limb symmetry index was 99%, the opposite knee, and this was only at 10 weeks out from surgery. So some future considerations. Which construct combination provides the best results? Will soft tissue grafts incorporate faster with grafting of the tunnels? Does adding autograft bone enhance the signaling characteristics of our composite graft? Can we increase allograft use if we enhance biology? And as always, we're concerned with return to play, time, and effectiveness.